Data-driven test is when you run the same test multiple times, but with a different set of data for every run. And here's the example of the use case. On our Conduit application, we have sign up field. And for example, if I type some invalid uh, values for username and password and try to sign up, we see the error message, for example, that uh, username is too uh, short or if I type three characters sign up and we don't see this error message anymore And if I type something like crazy long value and click sign up We have a different error message username is too long maximum is 20 characters So how would you test this in playwright? So this is example of the simple test, right? So I click on the sign up type the invalid result into username some value into the email I want to fail it intentionally then hello world is my password and when I click I validate the error message that username is too short but how about other use cases that uh, error message is not displayed with three characters and it's not displayed with 20 characters but should be displayed a different error message with 21 character well, you may think, let me create just four test cases like this, validating every time that, hey, this is my error message, then it should not contain username, then when 20 characters should not contain as well, and when I type more than 20 characters, I should see a different message, username is too long. But uh, you see, it's kind of not optimal at all, because you technically repeat the same test again and again, it creates just too much code. So this is when data-driven testing is helpful. You run the same test multiple times, but with a different test data. So let's refactor this test using a data-driven approach. So first of all, you need to create a data set. Uh, in Playwright, you would use just a simple array, uh, JavaScript array, and inside of the array, you will put objects with the data sets. And the data that we need are username, we need the error message, and uh, yeah, let's start recreating this. So username, username, and it should be, let's say, two characters. That will be the first value. Then we are looking for error uh, message to be displayed. And this will be this error message. And also we have a case when the error message is not displayed. So when we have three characters or 20 characters and we run the test, we should run a negative test case. So to drive this logic in the test, we need to create a flag that will be used later inside of the test. And let's create this flag uh, is error uh, displayed. And uh, we say true, because when it's three characters, the error message should be displayed. And now let's create all four data sets for our test run. So this is data set one, control C, I put the comma, the next object will be uh, three characters. We will validate that the username is not displayed as a part of error messages. So I will remove this string completely and the uh, error is should not be displayed it will be false like this then the next test is when we provide at 20 characters like this and the error message in this case also should not be displayed and the last case is when we provide 21 character and there should be a different error message so there will be 21 character and the error message will be this one, that username is too long. And the error is displayed, I change it to true. So that's the four data sets for our test. And then for this array, I call method for each, this is just the JavaScript for each method that will loop through our array. And on every iteration of the cycle, it will take the object for every cycle of this execution. And inside of this for each, it will be just a regular callback function. Now, inside of this callback function, I need to call all my properties for each of the object. It will be username, comma, it will be error message, comma, and it will be is error displayed, comma. These are the variables that will hold the value for each cycle of our test run. And then inside of the for each function, I literally just copy my test and paste it right here. 
quickly reformat and that's it. So now we need to fix some red squigglies over here. So Playwright doesn't like um, the error message test. It's hard coded right now. So for Playwright, it looks like we're trying to run uh, four tests with the same name. And Playwright, of course, doesn't like it. We need to make the names unique. So I change the single quotes to the backticks and now I can parameterize the name of my test. And I will use just a username, which is the value under the test. And that's it. Playwright figured out, all right, the variable will be used. So it means the uh, name for the test every time will be unique. And what is left is just to use this variable inside of the test. So instead of 12 over here that we type for username, I type the username variable. And for the error message, instead of hard-coded message over here, I replace it with error message here as well. But remember, we have two other test cases when the error message is not displayed. And we need to think about this in this test as well. So I will create a simple condition using the flag that we created before. So if error message displayed is true, then we want to validate this error message like this. All right, else if the flag is different, we want to validate that error message is not displayed. So I put dot not, not to contain error message. And that's it. The refactoring is done. And look how smaller our test currently looks like. And let's try to run it to make sure that it is working. So running the test, test case number one, number two, number three, and number four everything work correctly and look into the report execution we also see it as execution of four different tests not just a single test and every test has the unique name based on the variable value that we were using so that's it guys that's how easy is it to use uh, you know data-driven testing if you feel like you have a test scenarios that are similar by the flow but have a different test data convert them to the data-driven test it makes just so much sense to use it and it's actually very easy to use uh, all right if you have any questions post them down below in the comments and uh, thank you guys for watching i'll see you next week cheers